Uh, this is a huge topic, and we'll, we'll, we'll try to um, cover it very quickly. But the, the obviously, the first question is, what's the need of a, a Sephardic uh, genealogical society? And um, what we think is, is if you look at uh, the, the history of, uh, of, of modern genealogy, it, it started with the uh, TV series uh, Roots in uh, 1977. This uh, stimulated an interest in uh, Jewish genealogy. Um, and obviously within the Sephardic uh, segment, then uh, Jeff Malka uh, did uh, very useful work. But um, if, if we just step back for a second and look, in um, Western Europe, I mean, specifically uh, Britain and the Netherlands and to a lesser degree, um, France, we had very long established Sephardic communities and Ashkenazi communities who are almost as long um, established. And they, 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 they formed a sort of uh, um, a substructure uh, together. And so when there was mass immigration from uh, Eastern Europe, these new immigrants were sort of absorbed uh, within this uh, pre-existing world, which had a, a Sephardic uh, element. Uh, within the United States, uh, which is obviously is by far the largest uh, English-speaking uh, Jewish community, there was the same sort of situation, except the communities, the pre-existing Ashkenazi Sephardi communities were um, somewhat smaller. And then when the mass immigration started, it was proportionally on a much larger um, scale. And uh, these, these new migrants established their own uh, structures. They weren't sort of absorbed into what was already there. And so when they started forming uh, Jewish genealogical societies, effectively, um, they were Ashkenazi um, societies. Now, and, and of course, they, they, they made space for um, Sephardim and others, although perhaps in the early years, this, this wasn't done um, as perfectly as it could have done. And where, where, we, where we've got to today, it's a very different picture. So that, for example, Avatenu, the, the Avatenu DNA project, um, led by uh, sort of Adam Brown, uh, Michael Wass, and others, is completely at the cutting edge of uh, Sephardic genealogy and will probably rewrite everything we know within the next uh, 10 years or so. The uh, IAJGS, the International Association of Jewish Genealogical Societies, when it started off, it, it perhaps treated, uh, some might argue, it sometimes treated Sephardic genealogy as light entertainment. And it also mixed it up with this whole world of, of crypto Judaism, which we'll um, discuss a bit later. But again, now um, it's it's very much uh, on board and supportive of, of uh, Sephardic genealogy, to which we give uh, credit to uh, Jarrett Ross uh, and others. A Jew Jewish gen is is a little bit uh, different in so far as. Yes, they have a, a, a Sephardic um, area, which is uh, led by Serena Roffey, but then they also have this, this crypto Judaism uh, section. And that's, that's fine, but we just, we just ask that um, where Ashkenazi groups make space for crypto Judaism, that they should um, ask that they operate to the same genealogical standards as um, everyone else. So, um, just, just, just to be clear, um, in, in this meeting, when we're talking about Sephardi, we are talking about um, Iberian uh, Sephardi communities. We're not talking about sort of Mizrahim or people from uh, Central Asia and so on. Uh, and um, having said that, we very strongly encourage uh, members of those groups to form their own uh, organizations or at least uh, special interest groups. Um, like uh, most uh, anglo Sephardim, I have both... Uh, Ashkenazi and uh, Sephardic ancestry. And of course, what we're talking about is we're not talking about two different peoples. We're talking about two different genealogies, at least for a period of time that, that need different uh, skills. And so obviously we, we start off with um, the, uh, the known history of the Ashkenazim in Central and Eastern Europe, whereas the Sephardim are in the Mediterranean and the Atlantic world. And so these are completely different uh, geographies. I would say that um, using my own family as, as an example, my mother's family did this uh, single great migration from uh, Lithuania to, to Manchester in Northern England. Whereas on the Sephardic side of the family, they went from probably from Spain to Portugal 
Portugal to Spain, Spain somehow to Amsterdam and Amsterdam to London. Uh, and, and that's quite prosaic. In, in, in Sephardic families, we see things like uh, one family, uh, Ton and I studied, we, we presented to our, our, our patrons. They went from Portugal to Spain, to France, to Amsterdam, to London, to Barbados, to Curaçao, to Jamaica, to Central America. And, and then, you know, we have families like the Leñados going in the other direction from Spain to Italy to Aleppo to Basra, I think, to India and on to Singapore and some of them coming to London. So I, I, I think that it's, it's, it's a very different uh, environment. And perhaps because the Sephardim have been in, in Western Europe uh, longer and because of the greater mobility, uh, there's much more data, uh, at least I find when I'm I'm doing my research. Um, and perhaps the next two categories should be um, included as, as, as one. There are clearly many more people um, looking at uh, Ashkenazi ancestry than Sephardic ancestry because there's many more um, Ashkenazi Jews. And that means it's uh, better organized and uh, better funded. So very often with Ashkenazi genealogy, we will be um, searching in, in lists. I mean, I, I could name the excellent uh, JRI uh, Poland, whereas in Sephardic ancestry, if we're just taking Western Sephardim, we are looking in Amsterdam uh, archives, London Amsterdam archives, the Inquisition archives, and um, so forth. And again, the goals in doing uh, the genealogies are uh, different, so that uh, I aspire in my Ashkenazi genealogy to reach the 18th century, whereas that's where I literally I started uh, on my Sephardic genealogy. I asked my father his uh, grandparents' names, and using the London uh, Bevis Mux records, I got back to 1730 uh, in an afternoon. And of course, we, we, we all fantasize of, of going back to uh, 1492, except I think few of us um, will ever achieve that. Um, I would say that um, Ashkenazi genealogy is, is defined uh, very largely by oppression, or at least in sort of East Europeans, such as my, uh, Sephardic, uh, my Ashkenazi ancestors, whereas uh, on the Sephardic side, these are communities led by merchants. Um, so it's, it's a, a different dynamic. And again, if there's a key event, um, I mean, obviously in Jewish history, totally, but uh, especially within Ashkenazi genealogy, it, it's the Holocaust. And say in my family, there's just this huge gap where um, we're, we're trying to find the names of, of, of the people who are missing. Um, and I think on the Sephardic side, what's, what's happened is that uh, Sephardic communities um, were in, in, in Europe would just completely, uh, in some cases, annihilated. I mean, we can take the example of, uh, of Monastia, Bitola, it's now in, in Northern Macedonia, where 99% of the community uh, were, were murdered within a period of uh, a couple of weeks. And I think perhaps what's happening within Sephardic genealogy is that we are, um, the people who are doing the genealogy are, are not the descendants of the uh, communities that got uh, impacted by the Holocaust. So, I, I mean, obviously then later what has happened in, in our current period is these communities have, uh, have merged in, in the Americas, in Western Europe and uh, in Israel, of course. But, but what we're saying is, is that whilst we can all happily sit under the uh, umbrella of, of Jewish genealogy, there is something very different uh, about uh, Sephardic genealogy. Um, and um, Ton, if, if, if you want to, uh, to discuss some of the, uh, the specific issues we face within uh, Sephardic genealogy. Uh, these are some of the issues that reflect discussions about Sephardic genealogy, and we shall discuss them in this order. Uh, the crypto-Jewish movement started in the 20th century, at first slowly, it gained speed with the adv advance of the internet. Basic paradigms of the movement are that there are non-Jewish groups and individuals of Jewish origin around the world, and that some of these maintain the secret Jewish identity. The goals of the movement vary. 
you can be um, making these people aware of their origins and thereby creating sympathy for Israel to uh, converting them and encourage their coming to Israel, perhaps because of demographic reasons. Some prefer not to use the term uh, reconvert or, or convert, but was a return, arguing that they had been Jewish all along. Now, a lot of societies, foundations, groups that operate in this field, and two big ones are uh, Shavai Israel and the Society for Crypto Judaic Studies. Shavai is based in Israel. Uh, and finds B'nai and Muslim all over the world and increasingly in Latin America. Shavai is an example of a group that ultimately wants to convert as many people as possible and get them to Israel. The Society for Crypto Judaic Studies is based in the USA and concentrates mostly on Jew crypto Jews in the Southwest of America and in Mexico. The society is focused on collecting and publishing information, but also on creating a social network for crypto use. Other groups include Ray Connector and the very recently established Alliance, Alliance for Jewish Heritage. Many of these groups are Israel based and they are trying to get the Knesset interested into the subject again suggesting some political background to, to their interesting interest in the subject of B'nai Anusim or crypto Jews. Uh, we do think that these groups are well intentioned and some are doing good work. What then is the problem for Sephardic genealogy? And it comes down to the question of how to do research. Do you start with facts? Or, and do, draw your conclusion from them? Or do you uh, start with a belief that you are of Jewish origin and then find the facts to prove it? And there are some related questions to that. Uh, like, uh, are you looking for historic answers or are you looking for anything that confirms and comforts your belief? If you are looking for answers for your belief, you will find them no matter how. How many, uh, next slide please, David. How many of your ancestors were Jewish? Does it make one Sephardic if one has a few distant Sephardic ancestors in a sea of Catholic, Catholic ones? And how meaningful is it to rejoin a tradition that was unknown to your Sephardic ancestors? And lastly, why is there a gap of more than a century and a half between the abolishment of the Inquisition and the emergence of the crypto judaic movement? Okay. We expect the crypto Jewish movement to support accepted evidential standards in genealogy. And we hope that those with authority in the Jewish uh, genealogy uh, world uh, demand that these same uh, as, as evidential standards are followed everywhere. Then we proceed to Sephardim in Eastern Europe. And when I say Eastern Europe, I mean specifically uh, Poland, uh, the Baltic States, Russia. Where does that belief come from? In the 19th century, German historians started to paint Sephardim as worldly, uh, morally and intellectually superior and beautiful in order to draw a contrast to uh, the Ashkenazic waves of immigrants coming from the East to the West. And they regarded those Ashkenazic uh, immigrants as inferior. 
Både Safari men Eastern Europe. Oh yes, there were. There's the city of Zamosk built by Jan Zamoyski in a Renaissance style, uh, circa 1580. In 1588, he invited uh, Sephardim from the south of Europe uh, to further trade in this uh, beautiful and shining city. And they came and they built a synagogue there. But in the 1620s, the city experienced uh, a, an economic downturn. The Sephardim disappeared, leaving only their beautiful synagogue behind. The synagogue was recently uh, restored. <clears throat> and then there's Danzig. Deeds from the notarial archives of Amsterdam show that there was a merchant community in Danzig in the first decade of the 17th century, with contacts to Amsterdam, Hamburg, Portugal. Uh, a Spanish Inquisition document of the middle of that century shows that the Sephardim were still there in Danzig, circa 1650. Some 12 Sephardic families lived and traded there. And because Jews were not officially allowed in uh, Danzig, they met uh, um, in secretly in a house synagogue. Later sources are silent about Sephardim and Danzig, and the names of the families that were there in 1650 disappear from the records. Those are the two communities that we know of. In sure, there will have been individual Sephardim elsewhere in Eastern Europe, but not many. And how do you know that? We know that from Amsterdam sources. Uh, the site that Jewry or, uh, org has a database of 4,250 Sephardi marrying in Amsterdam. And the marriage bands that have these marriages often mention where they were born or where they came from. And they came from all over Europe, North Africa, the south of uh, Europe, the Near East, but none of the marriage partners came from Poland or Russia or the Baltic states. The nearest we come to, uh, to Eastern Europe is when someone from Vienna uh, marries in Amsterdam. Another source uh, is formed by the despacho list. Uh, the Amsterdam Sephardim sent its poor all over the world because they couldn't cope with so many poor Sephardi Jews flooding the city and they recorded their names and destinies. Tirza Levi Berenfeld counted them all and uh, she did that over the years of 1615 to 1760 roughly and of the roughly 6,000 persons that she counted, often rep representing families, uh, only three were sent to Poland and none to Russia or the Baltic states. Jeff Malka on Sephardic Gen has another database covering later years up to 1814. Of the 420 people mentioned there, none were sent to Poland, Russia, the Baltic states. And this means that from the Amsterdam perspective, they didn't recognize Sephardic communities in Eastern Europe or Sephardic individuals uh, coming there. It's not that they didn't know uh, uh, the Ashkenazim because more Ashkenazim came to Amsterdam than Sephardim. There are about 11,000 uh, Ashkenazic marriages in another database but they didn't mix. And the next slide, please. Uh, what's in a name? We used to hear quite often that certain names indicated that one had Sephardic origins, like Rodriguez or Sanchez. That started with Harry Stein, who uh, drew up a list of names on his website with references to literature and to other websites. 
And this list was very useful. It led you to research books, articles, and uh, other websites. But that list got a life of its own. Uh, it was sung loose from uh, the bibliographical references, and it was increasingly seen as a list where you went to, to prove your Sephardic origin. This ignores that the Sephardim had gotten those names at the time of their conversion from Catholic God's files. This in turn means that uh, any good. name uh, can be any name like uh, Rodrigo, Rodrigo or Sanchez could be Sephardic, but is much more likely Catholic. Luckily, we hear that less and less thanks to the pushback on the Sephardic diaspora and on tracing the Twag, among others by Shelly Dardashti. Next slide. And then we have some outright fantasies. Uh, Sephardim converted uh, to become Huguenots, or so goes the rumor. It would have been very unwise of them to do that because Jews were a tolerated minority in France and the Huguenots were uh, constantly uh, persecuted or in religious wars with Catholic France. And uh, 300,000 Huguenots ended up dead uh, and they died by uh, violent means. So Jews were better off to stay Jews or to hide as Catholics in France. Um, a number, quite a number of uh, Sephardic families got um, noble titles, especially in, uh, in Holland and in England. And with that, some of them also uh, uh, inherited uh, a totally new family tree, going back to medieval uh, Spain uh, with uh, barons and dukes and earls and counts. And uh, they mostly got these titles from the Spanish or Portuguese crown uh, in return for services rendered as diplomats or uh, intermediates in uh, international trade. Um, and then there's the meme, my family fled the Inquisition in 1492, which cannot be true because the king uh, and Queen of Spain, Ferdinand and Isabella, were the ones that expelled the Jews and not the Inquisition. The Inquisition was, uh, wasn't was established anyway to persecute Jews, but heretics, conversos, mostly. And then there are some folkloristic habits that are associated with being Sephardic, like sweeping the floor the wrong way, um, covering mirrors after a death, lighting candles in the cellar. Um, uh, I know for a fact that covering mirrors after a death is also a Catholic custom, and I've met doubts about the other ones. And we all have vacuum cleaners <coughs> anyway these days. The Star of David has been interpreted as a Sephardic symbol, which it wasn't before 1900. And when you see a genealogy that reaches back to the 11th century, you should regard that with some healthy skepsis. Back to David. Yeah, so, um, I mean, obviously, why, why are we uh, talking about um, Jews in Eastern Europe and crypto Judaism and uh, various strange habits? It, it's obviously that the, the Portuguese and Spanish nationality laws have... Uh, have really uh, pushed uh, Sephardic genealogy to, to the front of people's um, attention. And, and I think it's just worth having a quick uh, look at this and at some, perhaps at some future date, we can have a, uh, a more profound discussion. But um, obviously the, the offer of nationality is um, a huge uh, privilege. The, the laws though in uh, Portugal and Spain are, are 
somewhat imprecise about um, who is Sephardic uh, and, and there is no fixed um, evidential standard. So we, we see things like these uh, surname reports and, and, and other um, non, uh, non-compliant to uh, genealogical standard uh, methodologies uh, being used. Um, and, and, and obviously, as we here are concerned about uh, Sephardic uh, genealogy and heritage and, and history, but of course, a lot of people are just wanting to get themselves uh, a European uh, Union passport. And uh, that, that involves money. And unfortunately, uh, when there is uh, money, sometimes there are uh, people who are um, not operating to the highest um, ethical standards. Um, and also it has to be said that the, uh, the money that is um, being uh, uh, spent uh, on uh, obtaining uh, Portuguese and uh, Spanish ancestry, which could really have been uh, or could still be uh, invested in various Sephardic projects or indeed projects promoting uh, Jewish history within Portugal and Spain, tend, uh, tend not to go there. Um, but but that's um, that's perhaps a discussion for um, a future date. What we really wanted to to do now was to um, to discuss some of the goals um, that we are um, aiming aiming for, and um, hopefully people can uh, support us um, in this. I mean, first of all, obviously we have this uh, Sephardic World um, series that's been going now for a year and a half. Uh, it has been um, very successful. We have um, a lot of imitators, which means that Sephardic, um, the generally the Sephardic world online is 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 very dynamic. Uh, we have been promising for a long time and are still promising we will produce a quarterly uh, publication, which will be um, shared with our patrons and then hopefully um, with everyone. We are not going to form a, a, a Facebook group. I mean, Ton and I are obviously um, involved in the uh, Sephardic Diaspora group on, on Facebook with uh, Michael Wass and uh, Jarrett Ross. It is an absolutely excellent group. Uh, we would recommend uh, anyone with a serious interest in Sephardic genealogy to join. And there's, there's no reason to, uh, to form a, uh, an, another group, we think. Um, a code of conduct, and we're, we're working um, on a code of conduct, and we've just put a, a first draft on the uh, website, which is uh, sephardic.world. Um, we, we're proposing a, a voluntary code with sort of ethical standards and uh, research standards. It, it's perhaps a bit unfortunate the Spanish and Portuguese governments haven't themselves um, given these. Uh, why, why, why do we need these if, if there already are within genealogy and uh, Jewish genealogy particularly? And the reason I think it is particularly to do with the Portuguese and Spanish uh, nationality laws, which um, unfortunately uh, we, we have heard from a number of people who have had uh, bad experiences. I, I, I spoke with one lady who said that she and her family had spent uh, tens of thousands of dollars uh, on genealogy uh, with the synagogue, with uh, lawyers. And it was instantly apparent that, that she didn't have uh, Iberian Sephardic uh, origins. So what we're hoping to do is to, uh, to provide some structure so that people uh, of, of goodwill can uh, cooperate. And then hopefully the uh, Portuguese or Spanish uh, authorities will um, take over. During the um, last year and a half of our talks, we have um, heard from uh, a number of people wanting to get uh, archives digitized. I mean, specifically, we've heard from Morocco, uh, from Curaçao and the United States. And, and again, um, communities, uh, where, where there still are communities, often they don't have the funds to, uh, to do that. And, and we hope that we can uh, make a uh, a contribution to that in terms of, of uh, principally in trying to raise, raise some money to, to help them get them done. Um, and, and, and also photography of cemeteries, I would say particularly in the um, Arab world where we are 
uh, often short of, uh, of, of records. Um, a lot of the cemeteries there survive uh, intact. Uh, many, many people now have, uh, have uh, mobile phones. So it should theor theoretically be possible with a little bit of money to find people who can just go around um, and uh, we can develop databases and records uh, of these cemeteries. Um, use of technology, I think, is, is really interesting. Um, and um, starting with OCR, that's um, optical character recognition. What, what that is, is, is suppose you have um, some text and you, you scan it and it can then be read by your uh, computer as uh, text. And now there's various other softwares of which Transcribus uh, is one which can read um, handwriting. And uh, David Silvera, uh, Ton, uh, Ali Ogansoy and others are, are working on that because obviously most of the archives uh, that we work on with, within the Western Sephardic sphere are handwritten. And, and if we can just automatically read them, it will be absolutely uh, wonderful. Um, genetic genealogy, we, we've already uh, given a shout out, but let's do it again to uh, the Avertain of DNA project, uh, Adam Brown, Michael Wass and uh, colleagues, which I, I think is the most important uh, project going on at the moment within the world of uh, Sephardic genealogy. And um, it's already achieved a lot in its very early days. Uh, complex intelligent systems is 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 uh, my uh, my my sad little world or, or or what I used to do for a living, and what a complex intelligent system is is it's just a piece of software that you have encoded to mimic the actions that a uh, a human operator um, would do. So how that might work is suppose we have um, a list of uh, given names, say from OCR, or we've just copied out. Uh, documents. Um, if we think about the name Moses, we can think of about 20 different ways it can be written, sort of Moses, Mose, Mos, Mos dot dot, and so forth. Or, uh, and um, what a complex uh, intelligent system can do is it, it can read that and then give us in a, in a different column within the database, the standardized uh, version, and then we can do the same, obviously, with uh, surnames, and that then makes databases much uh, easier uh, to search. And uh, I mean, my, my my background is in developing uh, statistical models of global markets of uh, commodities or industrial products or so forth. Um, and text is somewhat more difficult, but I've I've I've, I've developed ways of of doing this. And then once we have these names, we can read more into them. So, for example, if we have a, a woman uh, who was born, let's say, in Bordeaux in in 1700, we can make a number of of logical assumptions. We can assume that uh, her lifespan is probably less than 120 years, so that by 1820 we can reasonably assume she is dead. We can assume that she has two parents. We can assume her mother is in the same place when she was born. Um, we can assume that there is probably some connection between the surnames she has given and those of her family. And, and if you can think about it, if we're doing this for everybody, we can start to do a lot of, uh, of, of, of cross-referencing and then identifying um, relationships um, in a much more efficient and uh, automated way. And uh, Western Sephardic genealogy is a very good place to start because it's a limited community. If, if it works for this, of course, it has significantly uh, wider applications, uh, including outside genealogy. So if uh, anyone has a lot of venture capital funds, uh, by all means, get in touch. Um, and, and finally, sort of uh, geodemographics. Is is just sort of plotting plotting where people are on on maps, but um, the the Western Sephardim were the first globalized um, community. So in 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 tracking where our ancestors were going, we're actually perhaps looking at at how the whole modern world we currently have it inhabit um, evolved. So. Um, in a funny way, whilst uh, Ton and I and our, our, our friends and, and yourself spend lots of time um, often buried in, in early modern uh, documents, we, we want to start using uh, tech in, in, in a much more serious way than um, 
is 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 generally used and i mean some of these systems that we're we're talking about are, are certainly advanced over the uh commercial genealogy um, companies uh, something else that we have done i starting with uh the sephardic diaspora group on on facebook which uh we 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 started uh with michael in um 2014 is is we have always kept sephardic genealogy close to the uh community um whereas say uh the jewish genealogical society of great britain of which i am a a very proud member is um is 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 very secular so, so that within Sephardic genealogy, say, you, you know our meetings here, we won't be uh, having meetings on, on Jewish holidays, for example. And, and the advantage of, of, of this is we have a, a number of rabbis and, and people who are heavily involved in the community uh, in our group, and uh, we can learn from them, and hopefully we can also be contributing um, um knowledge uh back to the community and, and of course a lot of people who are doing research uh, are outside the community maybe they had ancestors who left 100 years ago 200 years ago and what, what we hope is that they can learn much more about who we are this is not just sort of names and dates this is a a vibrant and living and uh, and fascinating community and hopefully we can also um make a contribution to uh to portugal and spain i mean the huderia industries in those countries perhaps don't understand sephardic uh history as as, as well as they might and um you know they, they're giving they're offering us citizenship and we can we can offer um we can offer things back um to them so um the uh, structure of the uh, society is is, is a um, a work in progress. That the plan eventually is that we will uh, register as a uh, charity in Portugal. Uh, at the moment, we are not a membership society. Um, there is some Dutch word I'm afraid I I, I can't uh, pronounce, uh, but. Um, we we obviously we have uh ton and myself uh we we have the uh, support of our, our our patrons and hopefully everyone else and uh we will uh evolve uh hopefully in a way that is uh as inclusive uh as as we can be it's obviously quite a different situation from most genealogical societies and that we are are virtual i mean there's you know on this meeting i know that there's people from uh from from Europe, from Israel, from Jamaica, from the United States, from from all over, and this creates um, a uh, quite a unique and quite a modern set of uh, of challenges. So, um, how can people help? I mean, first of all, obviously, we are very grateful to our supporters um, on uh, on Patreon. Uh, and and uh, to be clear, what we what we do is we use that money to uh, pay our bills on uh, Zoom, and we also have an account with uh, Mailchimp, which is the uh, the people that that send out the uh, the emails that hold the database, uh, and also for some sundry funds. We unfortunately can't uh, yet afford to find somebody to manage these uh, talks or to uh, edit the videos so that we can edit little clips and so forth but uh, and and of course everybody here knows that we we've had so many uh, technical uh, problems and errors uh, over, over the years but it would be nice to be able to uh, expand what we're doing and I mean obviously uh, uh, Ton and I have uh, we, we started this totally out of our own pockets and uh, are still doing it on our own uh, own time um if if anybody is uh, interested in providing a uh, sort of sponsorship for a particular project or indeed sponsorship for what we're we're doing we'd be very happy to um to hear from you i, I mean clearly at the moment it's it's difficult times for for lots of people and you know if, if you haven't got any money uh we've uh, or at least a lot of us have been there so don't uh, don't stress just uh your 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 turning up and supporting us is uh is 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 a gift of, of itself uh, and and what we're hoping is that um what we can do is 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 we can all stand up for um 
quality uh, research standards within uh, the world of Sephardic genealogy, which has been a little bit of a, of a football. And what we're hoping is that by, by providing uh, an address, and obviously we, we only speak for ourselves, we can't claim to speak for everybody, um, we can um, start to uh, start to engage with other groups and uh, and and hopefully um, integrate uh, at least those people within the crypto Judaic movement who are interested in 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 doing serious research. So um, that's almost forty five minutes. Um, it's really it's it's a a, a work in progress. Um, there's a lot of things we we haven't uh, worked out yet, but um, we just wanted to share what we were doing, and um, if if people have uh, comments or suggestions, hopefully hopefully nice ones, um, we'd be um, very interested to hear. I think uh, I, I should have mentioned um, a number of people will have seen the article yesterday uh, in the New York Times, where um, people I think from um, New Mexico were complaining about the uh, the changes in the, in the Spanish laws. Again, um, if the Spanish authorities wanted to talk to somebody, they don't really. I mean, they have the um, the uh, Jewish Federation in Spain, but they don't really have anyone uh, within the world of genealogy. So hopefully, we can um, we can fill that gap. So um, that's uh, that's what we are doing. I'm sorry if uh, this talk has been a little bit um, self-indulgent, um, but if anyone has any uh, comments uh, or, or, or suggestions or, or, or thoughts, then um, by all means, um, share them now. Um, Ton, do you, uh, have you seen any thoughts, comments? Ton, you're, you're, you're muted. I will unmute you. Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there's uh, a remark by Ainsley Harikas in uh, in chat. Maybe uh, you can give him um, the mic, so to speak. Yes, of course. Um, Ainsley. Okay, a Ainsley, you can uh, un unmute okay. yourself. Uh, yes, well, <laughs> no, I, I think it was an extraordinarily comprehensive analysis of where we are and from where we are coming. And what is very interesting <clears throat> is that uh, the, the International uh, Jewish Genealogical Society has now just created a major $2 million program where they have access to $2 million, uh, $2 million, not dollars, $2 million uh, people. Uh, in their new database, um, which is quite exciting. Um, so the concept of having it more specific to the people who have come out of the Iberian Peninsula, I think is very useful. But of course we have to remember, and we have experienced this here in Jamaica, that there are some people who have most, a lot of people who went in back into the Mediterranean from the expulsion in from Spain. And you're quite right. In, it, it, it wasn't the Inquisition that expelled them. It was Ferdinand and Isabella who expelled them. So we've had Moroccans and other people uh, of, of, the, of those national origins turn up in our, in our society. So it, it's an extremely fascinating complex issue because as you, have indicated, David, many of us, me included, have mixed an ancestry. And yeah. so to be able to separate us out by only our Sephardic background is one part of the equation. And of course, we also want to know something more about from where our Ashkenazi congregation, our Ashkenazi ancestors came from. So it's a tremendously important set of concepts that Sephardic world is addressing. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Uh, Bernard, you, you have your hand up. Do you want to unmute? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, I, I have a series of questions. Um, one of them is, uh, like most people here, I'm guessing that I am descended from crypto Jews because when people arrived in Holland, they usually arrived as Catholics. 
Um, and Co -co Correct. We're, we're using crypto Jews in, in the very specific uh, I understand. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. I'm just yeah. a little concerned about the use of the terminology because I think the purists would say the real Sephardic communities were those that ended up in Turkey and Greece because they went straight there and didn't convert. A lot of them just left and managed to make it to Turkey and Greece and have had continuous Jewish communities from which there has been a large emigration, particularly to North and South America since the 1940s. So would those people be counted as um, genuinely Sephardic for the purposes of this. There is a lot of documentation which they have access to, but I've got a rather more obscure one. I've ended up um, with a whole lot of research into people who are descended from um, people who were almost certainly conversos in India. Um, and I'm looking at people doing research in India in Glasgow, in Egypt, about the origins of those communities. I don't think they even have an agenda in terms of Portuguese citizenship. This is genuine historical and genealogical research. And so would they be part of it? Certainly the people who were in India from 1505 onwards um, couldn't have been Ashkenazim. They had come from Portugal and Spain, and um, well, basically from Portugal, and Portugal had basically annexed India. So you've got people there. Um, I'm just concerned that there is a slight feeling of possible hostility towards people whose lines of descent don't pass through the routes that you've described. And I would hate that to happen. Well, no, no, no. I have got I, a great I, I, contribution to make. I, 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 th I think not. I, I mean, what, what our concern is, is that Sephardic genealogy has been, um, how to put it gently, it, it, it means different things to different people. It's been appropriated uh, by what, some what people. What we are saying, what we are, are, are advocating for, is that it be um, done on uh, an evidential basis, that we, we gather the facts and we draw our conclusions from the facts. We don't start off, as indeed I have to say, when I first started looking, I assumed my my family was some great aristocratic thing because that's what yeah. I had uh, heard. And I started, honest to God, I, I started looking at castles in Spain that, that had once belonged to people called uh, called Mendoza. But, you know, I think a lot of us start there and we we, we get over it fairly quickly. What what we want to do is, is, is to just ensure that we have Sephardic um, uh, quality uh, research uh, and um, yeah, I mean, you know, Jew, Jew, Jews are mobile, different, different communities over, overlap and, and, and so forth. We're, we're not really trying to exclude anybody, but I, I think what we were trying to say at, at, at the beginning is there is a specific um, Sephardic genealogy, or perhaps we could say three different Sephardic genealogies, which are each very different from Ashkenazi genealogy, at least until we get to about 1800 or, or, or 18, 1850. It, it's not really about excluding anyone. It is about um, keeping fantasists out and um, just, uh, you know, having, having quality standards. I, I, I think that's, that's what can, it's Can about. you say something about the standards and about the code of conduct? Um, what you envisage being in it, and how how would it be pleased? Well, I, I mean, I mean we, 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 uh, we 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 sadly don't have our own little uh, inquisition to uh, to to control everyone. So it would be um, entirely voluntary. What what we're hoping to do is is just to sort of nudge um, others in into agreeing standards. I mean, I I have encountered. Um, at least a dozen people who have uh, been charged um, 
ridiculous sums of money by by uh, you know experts uh, when a lot of these didn't need to or they they weren't even uh, Jewish. So I uh, said so Jewish. Sorry, I pick one. They didn't have uh, clear and obvious Iberian Sephardic ancestry. Um, and and um, there's nobody, there's nobody trying to protect people like that. So perhaps if we can just um, put put up some standards. And we we've actually on the um, the website, which is uh, what is, what is the website? Sephardic World. We we've put up um, some draft uh, ideas, which of course everyone is very welcome to uh, to comment on. Um, Thanks. But, um, but yeah, um, so, so sorry if I can, um, Ellie's got a question, but before we um, uh, go to that, yes, uh, so somebody suggested that the Hebrew name shouldn't be upside down. I've, I've yeah. we, we heard that uh, elsewhere. Uh, and um, Bob, Bob is suggesting that the first priority should uh, be incorporation um, as a charity. Um, we're, we're kind of working on that, as, as, as I said, uh, we are hoping to um, to in in the fullness of time uh, incorporate as as a Portuguese charity. So what we're doing at the moment is interim, and uh, we are we are not lawyers. If there's any lawyers floating around who want to help us, they would be uh, most uh, most welcome. Um, uh, Ellie, would you like to unmute? Uh, thank you so much. As, as you know, my name is Eli Gabay, and I'm humbled to be the Parnas, or the president of Congregation McVeigh Israel in the Sephardic Center in Philadelphia, which has an archive of about 281 years. Yeah. So first of all, you are welcome to delve into our archive, which needs digitalization and, and, other, and, and, and other help, as you may. And it's a treasure trove yeah. of 281 years of Spanish and Portuguese beginning, and then later on, furthermore, of the American Revolution, et cetera. But I, I would say this, what you have done is unique. We're immersed in Sephardic uh, heritage and history all the time. Ainsley, uh, you know, the whole, the whole thing, and it, it's been all over. But you, what you have done is unique. You have made it scientific. The people that you have chosen and the subjects that you have chosen have been out of this world. And I really, I commend you to continue kindly. Don't stop and continue. And everyone should start to continue to support you um, in every regard. In that regard, I always extend Philadelphia as the home base for your organization, right? At our Sephardic Center. Um, we welcome this type of, um, of, uh, of studies that, that you do. And I welcome all of the members to come visit our, um, our archives and to cemeteries and to see what we have in Philadelphia of uh, 281 years going strong. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. And and actually, we, we, we need we need a, a speaker from um, Philadelphia. So so it would be wonderful if uh, you wanted to speak to us or, or, or could um, suggest um, somebody else. Uh, Tom, sorry, I've been uh, hogging the uh, microphone. No. Uh, I said also said thank you to uh, Eli. So, um, anyone else? Any questions? Maybe just just looking through. Um, oh, we we have an offer um, to um, uh, from. Uh, uh, Nidia to uh, help um, video editing. If, if if you want to send uh, an email to the um, the address on the uh, on the list, that would be really um, really kind. Um, we we we've had various comments about um, the activities of, of 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 certain law firms and things. I I, I don't think we should really uh, comment um, on those. Um, but um, I think just to to ask if anyone has a uh, a rich uncle or or, or some such, because um, obviously there are there are a number of people now doing similar things to us, um, or often uh, more more religious or food or, or or so on. But these tend to be synagogues that that have infrastructure, um, which uh, which which we don't. I mean, we're just you know operating off our own uh, computers. 
I thought Ainsley wanted to say something. Um, oh, I can unmute. Yeah, I just wanted to add. I just wanted to add that I've had a fair amount of experience with people who want to access Portuguese citizenship, not Spanish. I've been dealing only with the Portuguese people uh, because, again, of the origins of most of the people of Sephardic ancestry in Jamaica, and the answer lies very much with finding somebody in Portugal who can advise them what to do before they start shilling out massive amounts of money. Because it's really a fairly simple process if you know yeah. what you're doing. Yeah. And therefore, it, you know, it, it's, it's the code of conduct is really finding somebody who can advise you from Portugal. Maybe there's a small charge for that, but it's not a, it's not a major set of legal fees at that stage. And in, in, in a number of cases, a lot of people do not have the adequate family genealogical history to qualify for citizenship because it has to be approved by the a Jewish community in Portugal. That's part of the story. So this is all sort, sort of, sort of, I know there's a lot of en enthusiasm for people who want to have a, a European passport for all sorts of various reasons, um, but take it slowly. Don't throw away your money. No, I, I think that's a good point. Um, I um, created a system for the uh, S&P Safadi community of London, which is now sort of outsourced, which is, I think, uh, was more or less uh, Lisbon, uh, Jewish community of Lisbon went, went the same way um, and, uh, you know, gave people instructions because it, it's not... Um, it's not even necessary unless people really want to uh, to use a lawyer. Um, but um, I think um, I, I, I think there are some actors uh, within the the field who are perhaps more interested in the uh, financial than cultural aspects, and um, perhaps those of us who care about the cultural aspects um, need to have a, a slightly louder uh, voice. Um, Ali, Ali's asked about um, crowdsourcing. I, I, I'm not really sure that um, Sephardic genealogy is such a such a popular um, subject. We could give it a go, but um, okay. Uh, well, we've 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 covered an hour. Um, already. Um, oh, Selena, Selena's um, asking what, what we can provide when so much has been destroyed. Actually, in terms of, uh, I, I mean, it depends where we're, we're talking about. Um, obviously, most of the Western Sephardic archives are, are, are fairly um, uh, still existent. Um, uh, you know, places like Izmir and uh, Salonika lost um, lost most of what they had, and sort of the Egyptian archives are sort of uh, confiscated or under special care of the Egyptian National Archives or whatever we wish to call it. Um, but I, I, I think very very often we can um, we can reverse engineer so that, for example, you know, families that came from um, uh, Salonica, we, we can identify that perhaps from the census records or the naturalization records uh, in the countries that they, they went to um, with the Avitania DNA project. Over time, we can see how we can then be, be linking um, things together. There are newspapers and phone directories and goodness what, knows what else. So there is actually quite a lot um, still around uh, especially for the Safadim, I think uh, for the Ashkenazim, you know, after the, the, the Wehrmacht has been through a couple of times, there's not always very much left, but um, yeah. Um, Dor Doris is asking about specific uh, genealogy uh, questions. Um, uh, I will just uh, type in, um, well, actually, actually Doris, um, if you, um, go to the Patreon site or com communicate with us through that. Um, we can answer your questions. Uh, and for people on, on YouTube, uh, the email address that we sent is, um, is uh, gets through to us. Um, Tom. Um, 
I think that uh, wraps it up. And maybe it's time to announce our next speaker. Yep. Okay. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, watching us and helping us. Um, our next speaker will be Tirza Levi Bernfeld. And I know that we announced her two times previously, but uh, next week she will be there and she will be talking about uh, Balkan Jews and uh, the support for these Balkan Jews in the Western world. I hope to see you all next week. I uh, th again thank our patrons who uh, make all of this possible and I wish you an enjoyable week. Yeah, thank, thank, thank you everyone for, for putting up with us and uh, hopefully this is the start of something wonderful and new. So um, we look forward to seeing you all next week. Okay, bye-bye.